Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom was a film I think we all expected to fail simply because of all of the controversy that surrounded it ever since, of course, the AH and JD trial, but now it's finally released and we can see just how poorly it's doing by the numbers, and we can also see that fans and critics alike are not loving it. I have a few different things to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, follow me on social media, and consider supporting through Patreon or via YouTube memberships. Now, it is a sad, sad day to see a movie like this doing so poorly, right? Because this is the end of the DCEU that we know with Henry Cavill, Gal, Ben, all of these, in my opinion, actors who did a really good job with their characters for the most part. Obviously, they all stumbled at some points, but this is the end. If you look at what we all consider to be the end of the MCU, the Infinity Saga, that was almost perfection. Those movies were so fantastic and so many characters had such good ends to their stories. And unfortunately, this is why I'm sad about this because the DCEU is ending with not a bang, but a whimper. It is so sad to see this happen. There was a time that I would have been so excited for this movie to release, but unfortunately, because of specific actresses that are part of this movie, any kind of hype that we all had for it died, and you can see that audiences and critics alike are really not loving this movie. Now, I typically do not uh, care about critic scores. I always take them with a hefty grain of salt simply because they will rate pieces of trash amazing simply because maybe it pushes the message and they agree with things that the creatives behind the project have said but even they hate this the all critic is a 37 and the top critic is a 26 but the audience scores are a little bit more generous you have to take in mind that the movie is is only, you know, this is its first weekend in theaters, it's only just releasing, so a lot of the, you know, uh, DCEU super fans are going to see this, people who maybe even want to support Amber and say, you know what, it was a great option, um, to, to keep her in the, in the movie, it was a great idea to keep her in the movie, um, but it doesn't seem like they're showing up judging on the estimates for the weekend, but as you can see, the all audience is at a mere 65, and the verified is at a 77. Now, just look at the score difference, 250 ratings for the 77%, and the all audience is currently over a thousand. I think that these are both going to continue to tank. I think that this movie will end up probably around a 55%, but it did just just release, and if we look at some of the estimates, it is on track for the worst box office opening than the Marvel's DC sequel predicted to pull in just 40 million domestic across Christmas weekend. And keep in mind that Aquaman 1 made over a billion dollars. That movie was a smashing success for them, but I've got to be honest, I don't think they expected this movie to be as massive as the first one because there were petitions with millions of signatures, there's a contract controversial actress that's part of it, and other movies have been down, but I believe they were looking towards this as one of their bigger films of the year to make some profit in a year where they haven't done so well, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. So taking just a quick peek at this article, it says, per a December 19th analysis of the upcoming holiday box office prospects provided by Deadline, the final chapter looks to be having a domestic box office of just 40 million across the entirety of its debut four-day weekend. Assuming these figures end up accurately representing the movie, uh, they would represent an abysmal performance decline between the sequel and its predecessor releasing on December 21st per numbers provided by the aptly named box office uh, analysis outlet The Numbers, the first Aquaman ended its four-day weekend in theaters, the same amount of time covered in the analysis with a nearly triple-sized take of 105 
million dollars. Yeah, I mean, the first Aquaman was a really good movie. Of course, it had its moments that were less than perfect, but overall, it was a pretty good solo outing for Aquaman, and it's just sad to see that they really did stumble um, and ultimately not utilize actor potential. I mean, Jason Momoa is a fantastic actor, but we could say the same thing about almost all of the other DCEU films. They completely stumbled with Henry Cavill Superman, completely stumbled with Ben Affleck's Batman, and it was just a shame to see such a star-studded cast come together and then drop the ball and make content that people did not like. I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about this, but Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount Global CEOs have met to talk about a potential merger, and obviously, Warner Brothers Discovery has done terribly at the box office this year, and this is the end of the year. This is their last chance to make a hefty amount of money, and it does not look like Aquaman 2 is going to do that. It does look like it could potentially be another financial failure for them, which leads me to question, will this end up um, you know, being more fuel for the merger, will this lead to this merger? It says Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount Global have held talks about a potential merger of the two media companies. Warner Brothers Discovery's CEO David Zaslav met with the Paramount Global CEO Bob Backish for a lunch meeting Tuesday in New York where they discussed a possible merger, sources said. Obviously, there's not a lot of information here to go off of, but when you look look at something like Warner Brothers Discovery track record just over the past year they have not been doing all that good and they have banked on you know several extremely controversial actors who ended up being part of their you know hit movies that were supposed to be hits for the year like Ezra Miller in The Flash and Amber Heard and Aquaman and both of those movies completely and utterly failed so clearly the higher ups at the company don't know what consumers want they don't know how to, uh, you know, either make content people want or hire the people who are directing, producing, um, and just creating these movies. They just are not hiring the right people and they are greenlighting the wrong projects. Now, like I mentioned, we've still got quite a ways before, you know, we know if this will be actually a financial failure at the box office. It is only opening weekend, but it does appear that it is going to be opening worse than the Marvels, which of course was uh, an MCU record low, which is hilarious, and the DC sequel is only predicted to pull in roughly 40 million domestically across Christmas weekend, a very big weekend typically for movies. Just looks like it is going to be another failure under their belt, and I can't say that I feel all that bad or that I'm all that surprised. There were millions of people who signed the petition to have Amber removed from this movie to millions of people who supported Johnny publicly for years and years, and Warner did not care. They they pushed our criticisms and critiques to the side and said, we are gung-ho for Amber. We're going to bank on her. Same with Ezra Miller. They did not care what we had to say, even when we straight up told them we were not going to financially support their movies unless they, you know, got rid of someone like Amber and brought back someone like Johnny for future projects, and they did not do that. And now they are feeling the wrath of the consumer. They are actually seeing what we can do when we speak with our wallets, and will this lead to the merger? Ultimately, we do not know, but it definitely does not look good right now for Warner Brothers Discovery. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this and, of course, found it important and informative, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And, of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.